Hey everybody, I thought uh, we'll try something interesting. Uh, by going to Stack Overflow, uh, we're going to go to the menu, go to Tags, and find some interesting Python problems. After that, we're going to try to solve them uh, with Text DaVinci 003, also with Code DaVinci 002, and also with the GitHub Copilot. Uh, these are all AI-based systems. Um, I guess you need to uh, know about them ahead. Uh, they're pretty easy to use. Maybe I'll make another video to go over uh, what they really are. But uh, so uh, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to, let me do it again. Uh, go to stackoverflow.com, go to the menu and go to the tags. And I click on Python. And as you see, there's the newest tab, tab right here, active. I'm just going to go to active search for some questions uh, which already have some answers and these are new questions as you see some of them have very low views and zero answers the reason why i wanted to do this this way is because i just wanted to make sure that these questions weren't in, in the, the training data set of the gpt3 so i'm just going to go ahead and find a few cool examples uh, and then i'll be right back and we'll go over them okay so i found Three problems which we can try to solve. One of them is uh, related to a pandas data frame. This one, you can pause the video and read through it if you like. Another one is uh, reverse. This person had a question about how to reverse an array. I wanted to understand what all the, what all, what all the columns do. We can try asking that. Also, lastly, uh, how to pretty JSON format. Uh, this is what this person is wondering. So, so this is this one's pretty simple. All we're going to do is just copy the question. Let's start with text DaVinci 003. We're just going to paste it and uh, just going to say answer and see what comes up. Just going to limit the token size to 100. Okay, let's see. There we go. Uh, so you can use the pprint module. Well, let's see what the, uh, the actual answer that was like was as an, uh, that json.dumps is an indent argument. Did anybody else suggest that pprint? Not that I can see. So let's just. Let it try another one. OK, this time it said, uh, yes, there is. You can use the ipython.display.json function to display a pretty formatted JSON. And actually, uh, this is this is the second answer. Somebody else also said ipython.display.json. Let's see if it will actually give an example code so we can compare it. So this is the code it wrote. It defined, oh, it imported. Uh, JSON from ipython.display.import generated a uh, dictionary and it, uh, just used the import. Actually, if you compare, this is exactly how the second example I've done it. It's just that uh, uh, GPT-3 had defined the data as a variable here. Now oh, that's pretty cool. Let's try it one more time. Just going to erase all this. Let's see if we can get, uh, no, oh, uh, again, it says the pprint module. Let's try again. And the JSON, again, let's try one more time. So I paused the video and tried a few times. Uh, it never gave the first answer that, that, is, uh, this, that is this one, which is the most uploaded answer. It just says that json.dump has an indent argument. Again, it's using the ipython.display.json. OK, that's fine. Uh, so we shall just take this and just go to Code DaVinci. Uh, let's just select Python. Make sure this is uh, commented. Let's see what it says. I actually erased the uh, answer. Just, just wanted to go like that. Okay, this is pretty cool.
uh, it's just writing a lot because the token size, token limit is at 100. But essentially, it got the first answer, JSON that dump data indent, which is exactly what the first most upvoted answer was. Uh, we can run it again. And again, it's used on the indent. So obviously, uh, both the text DaVinci and the code DaVinci was able to answer it in different ways too. This is really interesting. So let's just try this in Visual Studio Code. I have my Copilot. You can install Copilot as an extension from your extensions. Anyway, let's just get rid of that. Paste it here. Uh, Copilot works in real time. So let me say question mark and uh, I've tried using the JSON function. It doesn't seem to work. Let's see what it comes up with. Yeah, sometimes you can get into a loop of um, just creating extra comments. But the way I like to overcome it is just to say answer. Uh, yes, use the JSON, JSON module, it says. And the JSON dumps function to format the output. And I have Python notebook, it says. Hmm. Well, actually, the yeah, that's true, but we need the indent argument. We, we wanted to say that. Let's try again. I'll actually go. Yeah, it's not giving me the answer. Uh, another thing is that, see, once it recommends its answer, it's given this in this grayed out way. You can accept it by pressing tab, right? But you can also, what you can do is, I believe it's alt right bracket to actually get its other answers. You can cycle through them. So none of, the, none of them seems to be perfect. You can also go control enter and it'll synthesize up to 10 solutions for it in a separate window. Okay, here, uh, so as you can see, one, two, the third answer does use indent, so it does give you the right answer. It also gives you a link. I'm not sure if this link works. I'm not going to try it, but actually, let's try it. Uh, shoot. Let's go quick. Okay, here we go. This is from another question. So it kind of has these, it knows from its data, data set too. So it knows how to reach into that. Anyway, so this is pretty cool that we kind of answered this one. Just uh, pay attention to the differences between the text DaVinci, code DaVinci, and the GitHub Copilot. So let's go to the next one. This one is how to, uh, what the reverse error in NumPy question mark. So I'm just going to copy this. This is the question. And essentially, the answer is just an explanation on why negative uh, 1 is the, uh, why, that, why that reverses. So if you want to see if GPT-3 can give us a good answer for that. So delete everything. And uh, I'll just say answer here. And we'll see what it says. This is text of inch. Okay, here we go. It says the syntax a uh, square brackets colon colon negative one is used to reverse an array. The first column indicates that the slicing should start from the beginning of the array. Second column indicates the slicing should, should step through the array by negative one. Which reverses the direction of the array. Last value negative one indicates that the slicing should end at the end of the array. Hmm. Not sure if that's, I don't think that is correct. Let's try again. Because the first space with, before the first colon is for the beginning index, the middle space is for the ending index, and the third one is the step count. Uh, all right, the new answer. And you say a syntax is a way of slicing an array in reverse order. It means that array should be iterated over in reverse order, starting from the last element, ending with the first element. 
By leaving the beginning and end of the syntax blank, it's assumed that the entire array should be included and sliced. The negative one signifies that the array should be iterated over in reverse order. Okay, well, this is somewhat acceptable. Let's go to uh, Code DaVinci and see what it says. Hmm. Okay, so it did give the answer. So this means for each element of a width x is zero with a step of negative one. Uh, and this, so you will return to reverse array. Yeah, that's pretty reasonable, but also obscure. Oops. Uh, let's try again. So the temperature is a zero temperature. The uh, metric is used to, if the temperature is uh, smaller, the more the smaller the temperature, the more deterministic the model gets. The more, the higher the number, then it can diverge from its determinism, essentially. So let's, let's give it one more try like this. Okay, so, so this is great. So the answer is the column operator is used, used to select the range of the elements along it. Oh, that's true. You can use, see, this the start index, stop index, and then the step. Select elements from start to stop, negative one, stepping by step. Okay, this is pretty cool. It's the correct answer. Let's just, uh, let's take this question again. Uh, let's copy it from here and ask it in VS Code. Let's just make these comments real quick. Okay. Answer. Okay, it says uh, can accept this means for each element of A, skip one element and go backwards and say reverse A. Sure, and we can try to scroll through different answers as you see. And look at all the answers it gives. And this is interesting. So you can you can see uh, if it, if the last element if the last item was two it means every second element so it gives it gives you the answer you need so you can definitely use GPT three and Copilot which is based on GPT three to some some sort of similar to how you would use Stack Overflow. Okay, so let's go to the last question. So this person says would like to say the DF value between two values is uh, too true. So essentially, we're just going to copy the whole thing. You can just pause the video and just take a look. This is interesting. You just want to see if GPT-3 will be able to understand it and see what it gives us back, what gives us back as an answer. Just going to go straight up and answer. We have switched back to text DaVinci. Text DaVinci is a bit slower than Codex, so I'll just pause it until it gives our, our answer. Doug, this is actually pretty crazy. Uh, so this the our answer begins from here. Sorry. Uh, could anyone help me solve this? Yeah. So it actually imports the pandas as PD and then actually creates the data set. This is crazy because it's actually true. See, X is 0, 1, 2, 3. Which is correct. Y is seven three four eight, which is correct. And Z is true, 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 false. Don't think we need that really. Okay, it just gave us the whole thing. Let's just copy and paste it and run it and see what happens. Uh, what were we going for? Seven, three, four, eight, zero, one, two, three. Well, it did create it in that order, though. Okay, let's see what the actual answer was. 
true 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 zero true 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 and the false is zero okay well it worked crazy why not uh let's see now oh uh, let's uh let's try the codex real quick and also let me know in the comments if, if you like this and i'm kind of out of it today so I'm not the most fun person to make this but i just wanted to just try this if you like this type of videos i'll make more again let's uh, delete the answer all right and uh so we did use code da vinci then let's try the text da vinci that's why actually it was pretty fast giving me the answer okay it did give us an answer but as you see it didn't import pandas um didn't even really yeah it didn't assign the df so it's going to give error but essentially so it, it did give an answer let's try it this was uh, the text da vinci all we have to do is just import uh, and look, import pandas as PD. See, the copilot is actually completing it. We don't need NumPy. Uh, I guess this gentleman, uh, while answering, he defined the DF. So let's just grab that, put it right here. Okay. And let's run it. Oh, uh, so, okay, let's get rid of that. Let's try again. Oh, return to you. We want to print it. One more time. Okay, well, voila, this worked too. Well, this is getting a bit long. I was going to try with the GitHub Copilot too, but uh, you can maybe experiment with that yourself. Uh, this was fun for me. I'll probably make more uh, like-minded like videos. Uh, well, take care and see you next time.